Welcome to PPA Expert. My name is Tom and I'll be presenting the Aircraft General Knowledge course. This course is designed to give you an in-depth understanding on the theory required to pass the CAA theory exam for this particular topic. Despite this, own self-study, commitment and discipline will be required. The course is displayed in the form of a slideshow which I'll be talking through. Please feel free to pause the recording at any point to either take a break or write down any notes. So now we're going to look at the contents of what we're going to cover in this subject. So we're going to cover the airframe of the aircraft, the aircraft engine itself and its components, the carburetor, aircraft systems, so how they all work, and instrumentation. Okay, and all these will be covered in more detail, which is applicable to the PPL syllabus uh, for the exams. So the major components of an aeroplane are the fuselage, which is the main body where the passenger sits, the wings, which create the lift, the tail assembly, which are the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer, the flight controls, so how we maneuver the aircraft, the landing gear, which absorbs the uh, weight of the aircraft, and the engine and the propeller. Okay, so we're going to go through all of these in more detail. First of all though, we're going to look at the fuselage, so the main body of the aircraft and it is the main structure to which all other components are attached. Okay, so all the other all the other components are attached to the fuselage. So the fuselage is the main the main part of it. Now, different aircraft have different construction techniques, but most light aircraft are of a semi monocoque construction and we'll go through what that means next. So first of all what is a monocoque construction? And a monocoque construction is when the skin of that structure is the entire weight bearing structure. So the skin uh, has all the strength in it um, to hold a shape the way it is. Okay. There are formers inside used to keep the shape, um, but they aren't uh, structural bearing. It's the skin itself that holds the weight of the aircraft and uh, its, its strength effectively. So an example of this maybe could be something like an egg. Uh, if you were to hold an egg and squeeze it really hard, it's probably unlikely to break. But once that shell cracks, then uh, the in structural integrity of the egg is broken and that's uh, similar to a monocoque construction where the skin holds all the rigidity and the strength within the structure. And then we have a semi monocoque construction. Okay, so the way this works is there's a lightweight framework inside which that supports the skin and it's the combination of the framework and the skin itself which will give the structure strength. Okay, so it's a combination between formers and skin that improves the strength of any structure. If the skin is damaged, that means that not necessarily the whole structure will be compromised in strength as it's got sort of almost two layers of protectivity. And most aircraft use make use of this technique as it offers the most redundancy if anything were to get damaged. So next we're going to look at the wings. Uh, so the wings itself are the component that create lift and they're exposed to very heavy loads. And those loads are well in excess of the aircraft's weight itself. The main structure of the wing is a central spar, which is where all the strength within the wing lies. Okay, and it can carries the loads vertically, upwards and downwards. And then from the spar there's also ribs which often stiffen the skin of the wing itself and they help transfer some of the load so it just increases the structural integrity of the aircraft. So again here's a diagram of a wing construction so you've got the skin itself which offers some strength you've got the main spar which is the most load bearing part and then the ribs itself which offer some uh, strength in a perpendicular direction okay and all of these together is what increases the strength within the, the aircraft. So different aircraft have different wing designs and it's by and large to their purpose. Okay, so you can see that some aircraft have a lower wing, some aircraft have a higher wing, 
or some aircraft have a biplane design, so dual wings. Okay, they all perform the same purpose, and it will have very slight uh, characteristic differences between the handling of these aircraft. But by and large, they, they all perform exactly the same in terms of creating lift. It's just a different way of constructing an aircraft. So next we're going to look at the tail, or otherwise known as the empennage, and it consists of two elements. Okay, we've got horizontal stabilizer and a vertical stabilizer. Okay, uh, most conventional is the uh, the horizontal uh, stabilizer lower down with a vertical stabilizer going up, and it's better because it's easily accessible for checking on the ground, but uh, it's more susceptible from turbulence from the wings. There are also T-tail designs where the horizontal stabilizer is higher up um, and that means it's clear of that turbulence so it's slightly smoother to control. However, it's inaccessible on the ground so it's harder to check for damage on the pre-flights and also a, a high T-tail design is susceptible to a steep stall which uh, is talked about in Principles of Flight. So just um, some housekeeping about securing an aircraft. So we want to secure the aircraft facing into the wind if possible. We should tie it down as well if we can. So tie it to the floor to make sure it's not going to move around. We want to lock the control surfaces and that's a lock within the aircraft, which means the control surfaces aren't free to move around. Covering the pitot uh, tube with a cover as well as in all engine openings and we'll talk about uh, some of these elements later on in AGK and if in any doubt just refer to the pilot's handbook where it will give the best way to do all of these things. So next we're going to look at cabin ventilation so how the uh, cockpit of the aircraft gets uh, ventilated with warm and cooler air. So for cooler air there's normally a vent which just opens up to the outside where fresh airflow can flow into the cockpits providing the uh, cooler air from the outside inside the cabin. Warm air however is obviously much harder to come by and uh, it's taken from around the engine so there's a shroud around the exhaust and that air is heated by the exhaust which is then pumped into the uh, cabin as hot air. Okay. We just need to be careful that um, because it's taken from around the exhaust, if there was any uh, pipes damaged uh, in regards to the exhaust, then that exhaust gas could leak into the air ventilation system and therefore cause carbon monoxide poisoning, which uh, can be deadly if exposed to. Okay. And that's why we have carbon monoxide poisoners, which we'll look at next. So it's just being aware that uh, all the hot air is coming from around the engine and the gases associated with that. So as I said, carbon monoxide poisoning could be present if there's a leak in the exhaust system and therefore the ventilation. So we just need to be aware of it. It's, we talked more about it in human performance and limitations, but some of the symptoms could be a headache, dizziness, nausea, a deterioration of vision, slow breathing, unconsciousness, and eventually, if we don't do anything about it, death. Okay, so we do need to be aware of it. Uh, if we start experiencing some of these symptoms, we want to open the cabin air vents and let that fresh air from the outside come in so we're not exposed to much of that hotter air, which could possibly have carbon monoxide poisoning in it. We also have detectors in the aircraft in two forms. One is an alarm, just like a fire alarm, and also we have this one as well, which is a yellow, uh, orange circle, and once carbon monoxide has been detected, that orange uh, circle will start to get some black dots on it. So now we're going to look at an aircraft engine, okay, and more specific to the kind of engines that we will be uh, using, which are piston engines. So we'll look at different kinds we get and what we'll actually be using in the aircraft we fly. There's lots of different types of piston engine aircraft, so different the way they're built and uh, their purposes. However, most engines in general aviation are horizontally opposed and we'll look at that slightly later on. 
and normally engines for aviation are specifically designed uh, they have higher tolerances they got they're generally stronger lighter to save weights and they have uh, more reliability So the first engine we're going to look at is a radial engine and the cylinders in a radial engine are arranged around a central crankshaft so they're all the way around a central point they're quite large in diameter and what this does is it allows for a high number of cylinders in a small space okay so they've got high power to size generally they're quite complex and they're quite prone to malfunction they're generally found on older aircraft uh, they're not yet used too much nowadays, but they do up a lot of power, which is why they were used uh, some years ago. The next kind of engine is a straight four. So instead of being horizontally opposed, it's vertically opposed. It's very simple design. It's easy to access all the certain parts of the engine. However, it's not very space efficient. Um, so it's quite large in size, there's a lot of wasted space underneath the cowling and they are ultimately a little bit heavier than the engines that we use nowadays. And these will be generally found on smaller um, but older aircraft. So we also have diesel engines and these are very modern uh, engines the way that they're produced. However, they run off diesel or more commonly jet a1 fuel and the advantage of this is a lot cheaper to run it's a lot cheaper fuel it's a lot stronger as well um, and they're often based off car engines which are then adapted for aviation however the disadvantage with this is they do require heavy turbochargers to give it that extra power so they're generally a heavier engine uh, but then they are more reliable and cheaper to run an aircraft on as well so more commonly what will be used is a horizontally opposed so that means the cylinders will be moving in a horizontal uh, direction and uh, normally a four cylinder or possibly a six cylinder on the aircraft and this is the most common type of engine. It's very lightweight, it's simple and that's what uh, is the best for aviation to save weight and to make it easy to maintain. So now we're going to look at the piston engine in a bit more detail as you need to know for the CA exam and how it works and all the elements to it. But the main purpose of the cylinder or the cylinder piston engine is to create chemical energy, so petrol or fuel, into uh, kinetic energy, so into a energy that we can use. The crankshaft, which is the central point of the engine, and the connecting rod, uh, which is connects the cylinder and the piston converts horizontal motion into a rotary motion. So that's what the cylinders uh, are horizontally opposed within a piston engine and the, the crankshaft will turn that horizontal motion into a rotary motion to turn a propeller or some kind of drive shaft. So we need to look at the, uh, the stages of a uh, four-stroke cylinder engine also known as the auto cycle and there's four main stages you need to know now in a four cylinder engine this these won't all happen at the same time they all happen simultaneously so one cylinder will be doing one event the other cylinder will be doing another okay so the first stage is called the intake stage now that's where there's two valves there's got an inlet valve where air fuel mixture comes in and then we got an exhaust valve and you can see those on the first number one picture there's those two sort of T looking shapes the inlet valve is the top one the exhaust valve is the bottom one we've also got two magnetos as well which are those things on the side of the um, cylinder wall and then we've got the piston head the con rod and the crankshaft lower down so in the first stage the piston moves down within 